Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches, RuPaul's Drag Race, Season 3, Episode 4. <laughs> so first things first, yeah. uh, we wanted to point out some new additions. Oh my god. Um, I would never say that. Uh, also, our drag, our fabulous uh, drag, us drag us shirt. Thanks, among, Rick. Yes, thanks, Rick. Among many others are available at moviebitches.threadless.com. Um, you can get this as many things, including a throw pillow or Ooh. a beach towel. Now, I like that as a beach towel. I feel like that would be good, right? So the episode starts. Mimi has gone home. Yes, Mimi and first had learned that drag is not a contact sport. Everyone is, like, giving India a lot of attention about it. Because it was crazy. It was absolutely insane. This season, I'm just thinking, like, has a lot of crazy, unprofessional behavior. We have Shangela throwing fucking drinks. You bitch! <laughs> but also, Phoenix? Venus? Venus. Threw her fucking wig. But all just, like, these... It's like... It's an ugly look. Yeah. So it starts and we sort of get this sense that India and Shangela have bonded. Alliances in this competition are very important. India is someone that I can share some tea with and not think it's going to come back around to me from another mouth. Yes, they like to kiki. Basically because Shangela feels like she can talk shit about people to India and India won't say anything. Yes. I mean, India won't say anything because she's going to leave. <sighs> I mean, that's what I was thinking. I was like, because she's no longer going to be on the program? I don't know what the long-term plan is here. <laughs> the mini challenge is you have 10 minutes to get into drag. Right. And you have to take a scandalous red carpet picture. Ready, set, a scandal. A scandal. A scandal. And so they're all running around going crazy. Manila goes first. She's a panda. I'm just so pandalicious. Oh, you're a panda! So, your scandal was that you were badly dressed. Yep. That's, well, that's not a scandal, that's just your style! So good. Well, I was like, panda... Sexual harassment panda? Like, where is this going, right? It didn't go anywhere. That makes me a sad panda. He's gonna tell you what's right and wrong. Sexual harassment, panda. I think she misunderstood the assignment. Maybe. She thought it meant, like, make a splash. Sure, on the red carpet, right? sure. Where it's like, you're always gonna remember that Bjork swan dress. You're always gonna remember that J-Lo uh, Versace right. low-cut dress. Like, right, oh my god, yes. That's, like, you know, ingrained. I think that's where she went instead of, like, disaster on the... Right, right. like, oh, just... here's my crotch, which is where everyone else went. I definitely didn't like most of these. Well, so Carmen just makes a vagina. In order to create a fake vag, it's all about the way that you tuck and fold your skin. Hers was the best of the crotch of the cr shots. Yes. Let me preface. I love that she's like, so... Is it okay that my face is not going to be in the frame? I mean, because it's about here. Yeah, whatever you want to do. And I appreciate you sharing your inner dialogue, but we're going to take that picture right now. Okay. We're going to just go ahead and take this shot. So then Raja's was, I guess, trying to... I mean, the Rihanna thing hadn't happened yet. Remember when, like... Oh. Well, I mean, remember Oh, when, is like, that what that was supposed to be? But she didn't look like she got beat up. She looked like she was like the last survivor of a horror movie. Sure. It was like a lot. Yeah, it was confusing. It was like, it oh. It wasn't like, oh no, I got beat up. No. And now I'm here. It I murdered like, someone and because we're in a was, zombie apocalypse. And was, now I'm on the red carpet to lot. accept my zombie award of the year. I don't know. What does the statue of the zombie award of the year look like? It's just brains. With a bite out, like an apple. You know, like the apple logo, Chomp. but just brains. Um, and then there was just like a lot of crotch shots yeah. that were boring. Boring. It was just a lot of like, oh, like, oh, I'm messy. Yeah, or whatever. Mariah just looked normal, but then had a, like a pit crew gimp. Like she had, it was like, it was like in Passion with like the mask. She had like a guy with like a, I know. Oh, I don't even think I noticed oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, here's the pit crew member wearing like a gimp mask, but she looked fairly normal and it was like, it's called a gimp? Yeah, bring out the gimp. Cause like that from Pulp Fiction. Bring out the gimp. Leave the gimp sleeping. Well, I guess you just have to go wake him up now, won't you? 
when they're like, you're like the the puppy slave or the puppy or whatever. Oh, I didn't know it was called a gimp. I think huh. so. I was like, so he's the weird one. It was odd. Right. Yeah. What's the scandal? I don't know. Oh, I guess you just brought like your she gimp. brought her her. Bring your own gimp. I don't know. It was odd. It wasn't a crotch shot. The sure. So there was that. And the whole time I was watching and I kept waiting. I was like, is somebody gonna do the Tara read? I have no feeling in my breasts and my shirt fell down because that was the whole thing. Oh, I don't remember. You don't know about any of these red I, carpet I, scandals. None. There was all these pictures that it was very funny but very sad at the same time of Tara Reid wearing like a loose sort of like Grecian thing and like it had fallen but because of her bad boob job like she didn't notice and so it was just out for a while and it was like so funny but so sad at the same time so that was that was stacy had sort of like a she made it actually look like her dress had ripped where a lot of people it was just like here's my boobs and you're like well that wouldn't happen, happen. you know like she right. told me a story yes it yeah. was like oh no my dress ripped yeah. which was like is a thing that could happen totally right? oh like alexis mateo you know like here's my breastplate on top of sean's head why would you do that? You would never do that. It just, it was like, what's this? Is this Showgirls? Where are these photos <laughs> being printed? Where are these photos going to run that are being snapped to this woman? I just don't remember seeing many strippers on Entertainment Tonight. So Carmen and Stacey win. Yep. And they get to pick teams for morning news shows. Yeah. These are your news teams. You'll be broadcasting live. Nobody wants to be the weather girl. There was a lot of talk about how the weather girl was the worst part. Who wants to do weather girl? No one wants to be weather girl. So I end up with weather girl and honestly, I'm hating it. I was like, that's the only person who can be like kind of outrageous crazy. and funny. Like the and, weather yeah. person is crazy. Yeah. They have carte blanche to be insane. Yeah. What are you, what are you talking about? Like, that's the part you want. So Brew comes by, is talking to the team. Yep, She's yep. talking to team Carmen. Carmen's just naked. Yep. Right? I was just like, oh, oh shit. Carmen's just naked behind this thing. They blurred much, it out. And like, it's like extra budget went to, oh fuck, they have to uh, blur off Carmen's dick again. I bet it was in the thousands. And she's going down the line talking to everybody. She goes to India. And India says that she's going to try and be ghetto, y'all. I'm kind of going with a little ghetto twist. Uh-huh. You know, because you got to be like, girl, you know, it's getting sunny outside. So <laughs> That's you being ghetto? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's rough. I don't know why it's a go-to thing to be ghetto. I feel like, it right? would, for at least for India, it would be much better to be like, really Midwesty or something. Sure, or to be slutty. Something. Like, why don't you be like the stu like the silly like slutty- the airheaded, like, yeah. I'm a meteorologist. <laughs> yeah. mm, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, over here in Texas, we have- <laughs> Be an idiot, yeah. be like pointing to Maine. And yeah. be like, in Texas, there's gonna be, sh oh no, showers. <laughs> you know, just be an idiot. Yeah. That's it, you did it. You and, then, it. and then you make your job 10 times easier because it doesn't matter what the fuck you're pointing to. Yeah, you don't need to be pointing at the right state, who cares? No. So then she goes by Stacy's team and it's sort of uneventful, but she's basically like Stacy. Uh, you're not really the most outrageous person on the yeah, planet. I can be. I uh, would want to see that. Step it the fuck up. Well, she does that to India too. She's yes. like, so now's you, the time. Yeah, we were I'm going to kick you. The subtext is you will be kicked off if you don't try and do something this episode. And then it was like, bye. <laughs> Watching the episode, I was like, I don't think Stacy deserves to be in the bottom. But watching the extra footage of them live in Untucked, I was like, oh, I get it. Oh, well, that was bad. So then Debbie Matinopoulos. Oh God. Who I didn't know. I didn't know her either. Debbie Matinopoulos. Oh, oh wow. Right. They all act like they know who they she is. They all act like they're, yeah, exactly. Stacy's like, we find out that Miss Henny, Miss Henny. Bitch, we find out that dead Miss Debbie Henny from The Few is gonna be giving us feedback about our performances. Oh. I can't wait to hear what this bitch has to show us. <laughs> Here's the thing. I know we're just gonna talk about it a little bit now. We'll talk about it more later. Okay. Stacy, I could tell, is one of those people that was like feeling overwhelmed by the bigger personalities. Yes. On the team, on the room, you know, whatever. 
On one hand, I agree with Raja. Yes, this is a competition, bitch. You gotta show up and you gotta be here to play because it's not my job to babysit you and tell you that you're fabulous and that you can hang with me. Right. On the other hand, Raja and Delta and Carmen and some of these other queens from the get yep. were super condescending, super dismissive, super disrespectful. And so then it's hard for someone to, to feel comfortable enough to really be themselves. Totally. And and I think we've seen this before. We saw it with Tatiana. Yep. Who actually did have the balls and the wherewithal to be like, fuck you, bitch. You better, fine, underestimate me. Right? Yeah. But then we also saw it with James Mansfield. Yeah. Where from the get, I mean, episode one. They were like, we all No one's you. going home. Yeah. And everyone's like, but you're terrible. Go away. And it's like, what? Why are you being such a nasty hoe? I don't know. I think Delta is coming from a place of insecurity. A little She's bit. She's the other big queen. Yes. You know. Well, and you see more of her insecurity in Untouched. Oh, yeah. She's Let's definitely fighting through that. Raja is definitely an elitist at times. Yes. It's, it's, it's. It's gray. It's gray. It's, it's gray. It's not black and white. I have feelings on both sides. Yep. So then they start, they go through the whole thing. And right. I thought it was just. The challenge. And then wow. it was like, that was the warm-up. It was a warm-up. And I was, was like, oh, what? <laughs> what well, was it showed more of the warm-up than the actual... A little bit. Consumer. A little bit. In Provincetown, Massachusetts, I'm like, girl, just like picture what like Al Roker would do. I did love the absurdity of the pit crew in their briefs. With, oh my like, god, with the, the headsets. headsets. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep, I like it. Five. Five. Four, three. They're not doing anything. Those headphones aren't plugged into anything. Nope, nothing. <laughs> I missed just that. Pan I down. missed that for season. Just like that right loose, loose, <laughs> loose flyers. <laughs> that American. The beekeeper here. I mean, it was like great. <laughs> yeah, so they're doing the warm up. It's a right. team goes first. Stacey has to read the teleprompter. Scientists have announced a cure for heterosexual heterosexuality. I've never, you know, been in front of a teleprompter. Slow that shit down, I got to read. Slow so the shit down? She's just really fun. But, that, but she didn't say that, she said that in the confessional. Yeah. I wish she had said that, like, I mean. She, I, she, she doesn't want to be like. Unprofessional? Right, but I think she should. I think she should. If she had said, I can't read that, slow that shit down, that'd be funny. You yeah. know, it's like, and then, even if that was her, even if that was live, you know, it's like. That's funny. That I feel funny. like with these challenges, sometimes people just like, like, they have that whole conversation where they're like, well, was it supposed to be a joke or is it supposed to be serious? It's no, a Carmen. Joke. <laughs> you're fucking drag queen. If this is supposed to look like we're watching TV and it's like a real news thing, then you know what I'm saying? What? Like, what's happening here? <laughs> I love that though, too, where it was like, it's called QNN, not CNN. Yeah. Like, this is a, it's a joke, it's a farce. Raj is like, unless they tell me to be serious, I'm going to be a joke. Yes. Unless they tell me that, I'm yes. going to be joking the yes. whole time. It was called the QNN, not yes. CNN. It That's your cue to be funny. Alexis seemed natural, but there. Well, it was like interesting again seeing the untucked, in the, the untucked footage. footage because she's just like chatting away and like trying to have a conversation and Stacey's like, mm-hmm. Well, this is crazy news, people. I know. Very refreshing for the morning. Yes, honey, it's, I'm awake and well. Yara as the weather girl. Oh, 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 almost very my ass. Oh, my God. Well, so this was good direction like, yes. to, to help her lean into it. Yes. Slow down or don't even speak a word of English. <laughs> Yara just seems like a drunk mess. And I loved it. Oh, it burns my ass! Oh, oh. <laughs> it's raining, man, down there. Okay, rainbow right here. Oh my God, that's so gay, but it's so good. I'm a combination of Lucy and Ricky. Like that's what it felt like, and I was like, uh huh, <laughs> I like it. I'm a combination of Lucy and Ricky. And it's terrifying. I understand what Delta is saying. That like, right? It's the same sing-songy. Could it become? A crutch, yes. yes. Do you think there's a chance that, like, if we have to make another video, that if you create something funny, like with the accent and like songs and stuff, they'll say, "Will you do that every time?" 
they haven't complained about it yet. No. So maybe worry about it down the line. That's, you know, I was like. Or maybe don't say anything. Maybe you let her just do it again and then have them say, right. look, this is, we get it. Do something different. Right. And then Shangela is the gossip columnist. Yeah, and she was great. I do think it's so good, but it's so gay is my new favorite phrase. Uh, yeah. Listen, honey, let me tell you, which A-list action hunk is finally coming out of the closet? This is what Shangela does yep. best. And this is what she should do. She should be like a red carpet interviewer or something. Although they tried it and it didn't work. Did they? Yeah. I was in one of your music videos. Oh, which one? As a boy, because I'm a drag queen diva, but I was in Beat It, the cover of Beat It. We shot it in LA. I was Michael Jackson. They tried it and it was like, yeah, it didn't do anything. Mm. But I, I agree and I get why Rue went gaga over her. I guess. Because she she was the best performer for me yeah. of anyone on this, like for this news, for the news segment. Yes. She, she was, was natural. She had the gift she of had, gab, yep. um, and she was natural about it. The next drag superstar wannabe is Carmen Carrera and Stacey Lane Matthews were the talk of the town after creating a huge scene. Honey, it was a scandalo. Y'all don't have a scandalo? This is the thing. I was like, oh, I do like Shangela sometimes. Like, she does have talents. Um, She's extremely charismatic. There's other aspects that use a lot of work, some of which she's really improved on since season three. Now she's like improved her look, her wig line isn't a mess like it was on the runway, we'll talk about it. Um, you know, so, so stuff like that. And then Mariah interviewing Kristen Cavallari. I'm here with Kristen Cavallari. I'm here with Kristen Cavallari. <laughs> It was like really good. I have a very special guest with me. Kristen Cavallari. Kristen Cavallari. She's got this very like royal. Yeah. Mm. Royal she thing. does, right? right? Yeah. She demands She's regal. that you bow to her. You yes. Know? It was like, and I wasn't mad about it. Mm -mm. But this... she was pretty bad at interviewing her. It wasn't great. Well, she just, I think she was really nervous and she kept forgetting things. And it was live, or, you know, it was live. Well, she had all her facts wrong. <laughs> yeah. The scandal around the town with Justin Brody. And Justin, you have Sean. Justin Bobby. <laughs> Justin Bobby. But you've been spotted with Nick as well. Who? Which I was like, where'd you get these facts? You don't have your phone. Did you do the research? I don't know. Did someone give you this bad research? That's what I did. Maybe know. someone told, maybe she was talking to someone about like the, the tea. You know, and backstage, and, and then she like couldn't remember. Some shady, uh, no, I think it was just you know. Oh, the, oh, and you and Chris, or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Who I they mean, were. I'll be honest. I barely know who Kristen Cavallari is. I only know who Kristen Cavallari is because I went to a summer like program with her at Boston University. You just said a lot of words that didn't make sense. I also slurred them, so that might have been the part of the problem. A summer program? What kind of summer program? What are you talking about? I don't remember what I studied. <laughs> Great. I went to you went um, to Boston. I went to Boston for like three weeks and like stayed in the dorms at Boston University. Hung out with Kristen Cavallari, who was no one at the time. Oh, so like she wasn't on the hills. She wasn't on the hills yet. Oh. And it's really funny because Would you like remember her. Well, be I mean, we were like friends. There was like twenty of us or whatever. So like we're all friends. There's like a pic. I have a picture of us like trying on like witches hats at like a thrift store in Boston. Because it was like really we were just being stupid high schoolers. But so then people were like, oh, Kristen Cavallari from the Hills, and I was like, oh, I know her. So that's the only reason that I remember her. Right. Sidebar. Also, one of the things I remember from that summer program. The, the TA or whatever? Not, not the subject you were learning. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. The TA, yes. Definitely knew that I was gay, even though I didn't. Great. And he also definitely showed me um, soccer practice. That like code for something? No, it's a video that you obviously haven't seen, but it's like a song from, oh God, I forget his name. It doesn't matter. It's like we'll, sexy, we'll put sweaty. Boys. It's like a bunch of soccer practice. Hey man, hey man. Hey man, hey, and it's like, it's your really Your soccer fun. practice video sounds a lot like your Vin Diesel impression. Hey man, drove your car last night, I hope it's cool. Hey dude, I was thinking we could go do something dirty. Hey, it's like a bunch of jocks in like the locker so room. So did you like, have a lot of feelings? Um, 
I didn't quite, although I did watch it again. He definitely knew, he was like, oh, maybe this will help him figure it out. Kind of did. So that happened at Boston University. Well, that's Kristen Cavallari. quite a sidebar I didn't expect. <laughs> yeah. I never watched The Hills. Me either. Or the other one? Laguna Beach. Was she on that? I don't know. I didn't watch it. I know her name because I live in the world. Yeah. But other than that, I have no idea. Because of her shoe line. Her shoe line that she's so excited about. Oh my god, I love shoes. Oh, shoes. I love shoes. Then Team Stacy goes live. Yes. And they all do this weird thing where it's all like, you know, like, hey, it's me. Oh my god, it's me or whatever. And they're all standing together and they all go, oh my god, I love this. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck was that? What was that? But I couldn't decide. Like, I didn't know what it was. But it also kind of seemed like a... Oh, you think it was like a jerk off? I don't think it was, but maybe it was. I hope it was. I hope so too. <laughs> I don't know, it was weird. Well, so everyone's performances in the live show was pretty much the same. I mean, Yara was like crazy. Right, Yara was like crazy drunk. Shangela was really good. Shangela was, seemed to be bringing them all together. Yes. She was like, all right, right, Yara? Like, she was like, yeah, yeah, she was kind of like, more like fun. a morning show, like, let's all chat and like, we're all a little bit. friends. Yeah. Group. They were a team, which is nice. But yeah, they were all pretty much like the same level. I mean, Mariah was. I'm working on a shoe line right now, which I'm really excited about. I'm excited about that too. So, were you really born a genetic woman? So, what are you up to? Well, I have a new shoe line I'm really excited about. Ooh, me too. So, are you a biological woman? <laughs> What? <laughs> yes. Oh, darn girls, we can't claim her for our team. It just came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Why? What? Stay tuned for the same news, different anchors. So then Team Carmen yes. starts. And Delta and Raja are there. Yeah. They were stiff. Pour yourself another cup of ambition because this is the morning after news. We'll have the latest on that horrific freak accident that killed so many innocent little people last night. It felt like Raja was trying to do that anchor thing of like, I'm saying something horrible, but like being mundane about it, right? Like, like truth about cats and dogs, yep. like 70 people were killed in a ferry accident. 79 people drowned and another 200 were injured when a passenger ferry caught fire last night. And another 200 were injured, you know, or whatever we were like, you have to say something and keep a straight face about it. But it was weird. Live from the QNN News Center, I am Raja. And I'm Delta Work. It wasn't fun to me. I wasn't like, yeah, I want to tune into the news with them. Oh, no. I mean, I didn't really want to tune in. Anyone. With Stacy and Alexis either. No. But, you know. No. I mean, I don't really like to watch the news, so. No, I don't either. There's that, too. And Carmen was... I thought she was bad. Which A-list action hunk is finally coming out of the closet? And then India... Oh, boy. ...was just a flat line. Now, deep in the heart of Texas, y'all. Y'all feeling me? There is a hell no storm. Okay. India seemed to be like hung up on like, oh, people are really gonna need to know this weather. Right? There is the barometric pressure it's dropping. Like, they're really gonna need to know about this hurricane that's coming in. It's yeah, like, no, it's good. No, We're cool. It's not a real thing. Yeah, she took it too seriously. Yeah. Now, there is a 932nd consecutive day rainbow in South... No so then Manila comes out yeah. with this crazy, over-the-top, stereotypical Chinese accent. Yep. And the best part was watching Kristen Cavallari squirm. <laughs> yep. Kristen, you were on a tour hit TV show. She's just like, oh no. Oh. I don't know how to react to this. She's, oh God. Her literal oh reaction God. is, oh no. Oh, oh dear God. What year you born? Uh, 87. Oh, me too. You're of the cock. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Lusta. Sheer panic. I'm yep. just like, there's a crazy person talking at me. I don't want to come off racist. I don't want to come off unfun. 
oh no, like it was just like a lot going on and I just had a blast. My publicist did not warn me about this. <laughs> don't have boyfriend? I don't, I'm single. Oh, I have brother. <laughs> you should hook up with him. You should marry. Immigration, lots of money. But for well, I mean, me- we had Angina last season. Yes. Like, oh, I'm Connie Chung or whatever. Right. Yeah, she did, that was exact. I'm Connie Chung. My name is Connie Chung. <laughs> So, we'll get into it. Yes. I have feelings. They're mostly with Vanilla. Yeah. Pretty much all. They're drag queens. They're drag queens. Like, let's not take it too seriously. Yes, there's always a line. Was it crossed, in my opinion? No. It wasn't, and now I'm going to, like, make some really offensive racist jokes in this racist accent. Exactly. So then, so the live show, again, Delta and, and Raja did this forbidden, same, okay. forbidden lesbian love story that you missed completely. Yep, apparently. Carbon was boring. Yep. India, at this point, India transcended to it being so bad, I was laughing. Yeah. When she's like, there's a hell no storm. Like, it was so bad that I was like, this is hilarious. There is a hell no storm. And then also, so then I noticed she has like a Big oh, black, black dot! You know how did we not talk? How could you not notice it? How did anyone not notice it? And how did someone not say something? I was so confused. Every by girl it. wants to have a big black hole right on her crotch. crotch. I mean, it was like, wait a minute. Like it was just. I mean, it was. It, it was absurd, and and it was not mentioned at all. At all. Why does that outfit exist? That's the better question. What, did, did she break a pen right before they went it on air? It looks like, you know, she fell asleep with a pen in her lap. Oh no! Yeah, I don't know. So weird. Bizarre. I'm glad you noticed too. I, you would have to be blind not to notice, literally. I am legally blind, so I can say that. Without your contact? Yeah. Wow. So then Manila goes. I'm really focusing on my shoe line that I'm designing. Oh, shoes. I love shoes. I think every girl loves shoes. And I thought it was just the right amount of like, oh, I'm going to be interviewing you, but also this is a joke and this is not a real thing. Yeah. So I'm going to be farcical and show my personality. Back to you in the studio, Laja and Delta. So then everyone's getting ready in the mirror. Oh, boy. Would you ever compete in a pageant, Raja? It's not my thing. My name is Raja, so I can't do that. I'm way too rock and roll. Raja's basically like, no, I'm too like rock and roll. <laughs> she's like, I'm too fucking cool for your pageants. But she says, I mean, she's just like, it's not my thing. Right. She doesn't say it in a super dismissive she way. She really didn't. She's like, it's not my thing. I don't need to be in a box. But it sounds to me like you're saying that people who compete in pageants aren't performance artists. Oh, stop it, Shangela. I didn't say that. I'm listening. Oh, so what are you saying? That we're too good for a pageant? Like, this is what Shangela does. Yeah. She starts something and then just like escalates it, escalates it, escalates it, and like puts words in people's mouth and just like jumps to 11. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's just, I don't know, it bothers me. We don't have that in California. We do. I'm the current California Entertainer of the Year. And then Mariah, they cut to Mariah being like, Shangela is California Miss EOI, honey, and she is really passionate about that. She definitely let us all know. <laughs> We've all heard about how she's Entertainer of the Year. She's like, we've heard it, so we've heard about it. When I see that little glimpse of like entitlement, when you've only been doing drag for minutes. It was a stupid conversation, and I think that was the problem, is because I think both points were valid, right? You can be an artist and still compete in this pageant, because what are they doing right now? Exactly. All of them yes. are on a pageant. Shangela, this whole episode, it made me realize that like, she's not really that artistic. No. She's not edgy at all. No. I just don't, I don't know if she's the kind of drag queen I'm ever going to love. No, I don't think for you, no. Like, she's very entertaining. She's charismatic. She has the gift of gab. Yep. Totally. Yes. That's not enough for me. Right. For me personally. Delta and Raja definitely seem like the camp counselors. How is it your art form if you're doing the art under somebody else's rules? Thank you. You can defend her because it's your best friend. I'm defending her because she's right. But it definitely felt like they're like... The TAs or whatever that are like the cool kids that smoke behind the cabin, you know, or whatever, and yes. like, and them. So quick commercial break, and then we'll be back with uh, the runway and untucked. Lots and of untucked. A lot of untucked. <laughs> so Rue walks in, 
down the runway. And I really like this. Actually. I love this. Yeah. It was, it could easily turn tacky, but it's such a Rue look. And was, the way that Rue wore it, I was like, yeah. It fits very well. Like with a few extra bracelets, it could have gone tickety tack. Yeah. But it wasn't. So Billy B is back. I was like, yes, I love Billy B. Yes. There were a lot of guest judges because yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt Nopolis was she back. She could have. She could have gone. She could have just, just have her for the, been for the challenge. Yeah. Because then Chloe Sevigny is the other one who is. I like her. She's great. I yeah. love her. Yeah. Can she be like a princess on Fabulous Cunt Island? Oh, I feel like she's on Fabulous Just Cunt Island. totally fully on. She is on Fabulous. Her and Kate Beckinsale. Oh, you put her and Kate Beckinsale on the same level. Well, just because they're both in love and friendship. It made me... Oh, it made yes. me think of them. Okay, because of love and friendship, she gets a she gets a ticket onto Fabulous Cunt Island. I mean, because of Underworld Blood Wars, she gets a ticket onto Fabulous Cunt Island. Kate Beckinsale? Are we talking about Chloe Sevigny? Uh, Kate Beckinsale was no question. <laughs> Kate Beckinsale, free pass. Go go right ahead. Rue says something like, well, look out, Scorpio. Hey, Scorpio sister. <laughs> Hello. I'm feeling very Scorpio tonight. <laughs> Good. I'm a double Scorpio, so watch out. <laughs> I'm a double Scorpio. Better watch out. It's just like, what's going on? <laughs> I looked up, they're both November birthdays. They're oh, both so, Scorpios. Well, but a double Scorpio, do you know what that means? She's like born under the Scorpion moon or something. <laughs> it's like... The rock blessed her. Exactly. At her birth. Yes, exactly. But He's... it was CGI crab the rock. <laughs> <laughs> With baby, Clo baby Chloe Sevigny in the manger. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. That was one of the, the animals at, at the birth. <laughs> there was a lobster at the birth of Jesus. A rock lobster! <laughs> I love it. This, this is all just coming. <laughs> You're a Scorpio. My mom is a Scorpio. Yes. I'm a Pisces. Very calm. Sign. Emotional though. Actually, they, they what's weird is because water signs are, are supposed to be like you're, dreamers you're or like, whatever. You're you're steady, yet you feel it all. Yes. There you go, the waves, right? But like you have a you have a, a solid ship. Sure. Did I tell you about how I was stung by a scorpion? <laughs> when? When I was growing up I, in Arizona, uh I was twelve maybe, and it was getting ready for school. And I put on my shorts and I got stung no! by a scorpion that was in my shorts hanging up in my closet. Wait, I have a lot of questions. You hung up your shorts? Yeah, yeah. Like... I still hang my shorts. Like a little clamby? Yeah, little clambies. <laughs> Obviously, I have a lot of shorts. What? So yeah, I would hang them up and it was like shorts and then pants and whatever. Yeah. You hang your pants? Yeah, you don't hang your pants? No. Oh. Yeah, I hang my pants. Like your jeans? Yeah, I hang all of my pants. And I got to stay home and watch Price is Right. And I was like, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would not necessarily say I would do it again, but I might. So category is fabulous drag. Right? It was pretty but generic. It was pretty generic. And a lot of it wasn't so fabulous. It's just like, it, I think it was your most fabulous drag. Sure. So first down the runway was Delta Work in some Dolly Parton... Mermaid. Did you like this? I didn't hate it. This was just not flattering for her. No, the it, shape it was definitely was a like mess. A, it was like a I Dream of Genie like like Halloween costume. A little you know bit, I mean? a little like... bit. So the next up, Shangela, looking tickety tick tack. Oh boy, it was too much of everything. It was. It was like a rainbow dress with cutouts. And it was bejeweled, and she had bracelets, and everybody was like, "Those bracelets too." Oh, it was so much. I mean, it was an outfit. Sure, like, yes. It was a dress. Yes. She was wearing a full dress, mostly. M mostly, <laughs> her nips were not showing. Her nips weren't showing. It was very Donatella Versace, like yes, but trashy. And you've complained about Shangela's makeup a bunch, and I get it. This for it's me heavy. was some of her worst makeup. It's heavy. Yeah. Just like. No blending, thick. So then Carmen comes out. Now I have a question. Uh -huh. Did Carmen bring any clothes? No. Why is it's like why is she making stuff when it's not required? 
It's not like she's a seamstress. Like, she literally comes out in a, what I thought was a tube top and a crinkled mini skirt made out of newspaper. Turns out, it's just one big pasty. Yep. And so it's really confusing because it seems like it's like, okay, now everyone has to make an outfit out of newspaper. Like, right. Like she thought that was the assignment. This is the unconventional materials challenge. No, this right. isn't. This is the most fabulous drag challenge. This is your most fabulous drag. Stop relying on that body. So then next was Mariah Balenciaga. She was channeling some Michelle Obama. Oh my God, yes. Like she was like, an elegant goddess. Um, an elegant goddess. And I was just like, I'm usually, I was here for it. Oh, I loved it. I'm usually not a huge fan of like the earrings, earpiece things, but yeah. these were like pretty and like smaller. It, it, it wasn't too distracting. Her face. Oh, I mean, always. Always. This like blue velvet structure. I just loved it. I thought she just looked perfectly eleganza. Yes. Then next, down the runway, oh God, Alexis Mateo. <laughs> In this disco ball cha-cha. I mean, once again, she looks like a pony. For the end of this season, we're gonna have like a carousel of, like a Photoshop <laughs> carousel of Alexis Mateo just being like, Meow. I mean, her hair, her wig was fucking fabulous yes. this week. Yes. Her wigs are on point. Yes. But this outfit was like, meh. Meh. And um, I agree with you, particularly this week. I was like, oh, she, April's right her, She doesn't know how to fit her body. You know what she I think? She pads it was? herself in a way that makes her look bigger. Well, you know what I think it was though. I don't think that she, if she was cinched, she mm. wasn't cinched enough. Maybe she needs a, wa a waist cincher. Or some, or she needs She's to like, pad, or she needs to pad her hips more. Whatever it was, whatever it is, it's she, just she needs too more, straight. She, she doesn't, doesn't have enough hourglass. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the next, which I guess I would say, speaking of forgettable, was India Farah. Oh, come on. It was on. so boring. It was boring. It, it was, was so boring. It was boring. boring. This it's like thick, quilted gray gown with a gray sash. It was really bad. It, was, it wasn't great. I thought she looked pretty. I did. I thought she looked... Her makeup was crazy. <laughs> well, it was, it was, her makeup was the same. We got to do the whole side by side. It was like... I guess that's her way of painting her face. Yes. I don't know. I don't feel like India quite totally had found herself yet at this moment in time. I agree. Okay. Your most fabulous drag. Oh yeah, absolutely not. You wore a gray dress, a heavy, like couch material gray dress. Well, and then it just had like an unnecessary sash. Right, yeah. Should that be like someone's new drag name? Unnecessary sash. Unnecessary sash. I like it. I like it too. Coming down up next, unnecessary sash. I don't know why it became like a nineteen twenty. Oh, horse race. Yeah, it was like I was like running, like running the races. Yeah. And unnecessary sash is coming up close, right behind us. So next up is Stacy Lane Bryant with a Yorkie on her head. So many feathers. I would have been okay with the feather mohawk if it weren't for all the other crap. The other crap. I will say this. At least this was something. And it was kind of fabulous. Like from here up, like it was giving me some Rufio. Yeah. And I wasn't mad. No, that's true. Rufio, Rufio. But it was like a, a big cluttered mess, the rest of it. A, a like little the, bit. The gown was like sparkly and there was flowers. And there was, and a, there was, was a lot this. going on. There was feathers on her hands. It was just like too much. Too much. But, uh, but I, was, I was not mad at the like feathered mohawk with the headband. All together, too much. Yes. So next on the runway, Nilla Luzon in her iconic pineapple gown. I mean, literally all I wrote down was iconic. <laughs> Everything is, for me, on point, right? It was perfection. I mean, she has the silly little pineapple, pineapple ring rings, earrings. She's got the little green yep. pineapple top on yep. her head. Yep. It the, fits great. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. It I, was like cheeky, but like, and campy, but just, just enough. Yep. And yet so many of the queens were reading her for it. They were just being hateful this week. So then next on the runway, Yana Sophia with this like Cyrano de Bergerac hat on. That's a hat, hat hair, hair hat. She has hair such hat. crazy wigs. I mean, I didn't hate it. No. But boy, was I confused. Yep. And the outfit was... I don't remember. 
chiffon, it was like a, a see-through black chiffon robe with like a bejeweled uh, bikini under it. Literally, oh yes! I will say this, the only thing that bugged me about the bikini was like the weird jeweled bottom of the... The fact that she looked like she had a big giant dick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it was? That, that, that was it. Okay, great. So, so then... Last down the runway. Oh my gosh. Last and best. And best. Down this runway, for sure. Oh Raja God. and her Marie Antoinette. She makes all of these historical or cultural references, but it's always fashion. Yes. It's yes. never a costume. Oh, and her face was just, I mean, it was, white, it was like... And then it, she blended it the way, because it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to do my whole body white. No, 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 no. It was she just, used the necklace yep. to cover. Yep. It was very, like, Glenn Close and Dangerous Liaisons, and I was like, uh-huh. Or, like, uh, remember that movie, Affair of the Necklace, like, with Hilary Swank? And you were like, you don't look like you're in a period piece, Hilary Swank. What's going on? I don't think Hilary Swank could really pull off period. Spoiler alert, she does not. <laughs> I am not afraid. In fact, this is one of the more delightful evenings I've spent in a catacomb. No, but Raja was just everything. It, it was everything. Fabulous. Fa which was the category, right? may I remind you. Flawless. Flawlessly fabulous. Yeah. Love it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So, everybody loves Manila. They're all like, it was so wrong, it was right, and like, you're fabulous, and you, you really went for it, and you had to... I think the key was she committed 100%. Yes. And that's what Michelle said. With that type of thing, it cannot be half-assed. And you went completely there, did not break character. It was fantastic. And I, okay, and I guess we might as well just talk about it now. I think, you know, it's like if you look at these comedians who, who go all the way, right? Right. You have to be unapologetic. You have to just be committed mm -hmm. and say, look, this is a joke. Joan Rivers never apologized, yeah. right? She was just it's like, a fucking joke. it's a fucking joke. If you're gonna be groundbreaking, some eggs have gotta be broken to make an omelet. For me, it was okay. Yeah, well, and even Rue says like, well, it's just, I think this was like oh to cover her from getting sued or whatever the fuck, but she even says like, what would you say to someone who's right. offended? Right. I don't think we have enough Asian people in pop culture. I'm here to entertain. I'm here to be farcical and just trying to do my job. So they, so they critique everybody and... You're safe, blah, blah, blah. She's going through this, that. She gets to Manila and she's like, you broke all the rules. You crossed the line. And you perpetuated stereotypes. And it keeps Me cutting like Shangela to Shangela like, just being like, oh yeah. That's gonna, right, you bitch. I'm gonna win this challenge. It's gonna be everything. Cut back to Manila. Congratulations, Manila. You're the winner. What the fuck? She's just like, oh, it was so good. India, India and Stacy are in the bottom. Stacy's like, I'm not ready to go home. I do not want to go home. I ain't shit in North Carolina but cornfields, honey. She said it, and I had to rewind it a couple times. So I was like, what? I was like, huh? Oh, yeah, okay. It's gibberish. Oh, I got it. Great. I ain't shit in North Carolina but cornfields, honey. And they lip sync to Meet Me in the Ladies Room? This was so weird. By Climax. I didn't get this. <sighs> I mean, Stacy turned it. Mm. It was a lot of talking. Yeah, it was like weird spoken word. It was like, what is happening? This is a song? What's going on? Who picked this? I had to leave my condo to come to this. Why didn't they do it's rainy men, right? I India mean, was the weather woman. Um, India was fine. Stacy was much better. It was clear to me Stacy won. Even though Rue was like, this was a close one. I mean, it, it was close-ish. They were both, n neither of them were fabulous. Neither of them was like, oh my god, this is the best lip sync ever. But how could you do this fucking boring the song? The song was weird. The song was very weird. But anyway, India goes home, yep. Stacy stays, duh. India Farah. Your time at RuPaul's Drag Race has reached its climax. And then... Untucked. And then Untucked. Whoa. So Untucked starts, and everyone gets back there, and they all pretty much agree that India was fucking terrible in the challenge. And they cut to unseen footage of her just being like, over in Tennessee, there's... Rain cloud, like it's really bad. Well, and then and she like trips that herself up. And... Shady music, like right, right, right. There's a hurricane headed towards Providence Key. Nope, sorry. <laughs> now, there it. And they keep cutting to like Raja and everyone watching her, just being like. In South 
No, in Gayville, South Dakota. Okay. Girl, what? <laughs> Weather is hot out there, and um, mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, so then oh, there's this whole thing. Well, so do you think that because there's not a clear and obvious attempt to slowly pronounce the words, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying, do you think that they'll say, "Well, you're doing that every time"? This was weird, and it was clearly coming from a place of Delta being insecure as well. Yeah. But also, I did like the maturity of Delta being like. No, let me fully explain what I'm talking about. Yes. You haven't created your accent. You're from Puerto Rico and your first yes. language is Spanish and I'm yes. aware of that. No, I understand that you English is your second language, blah, She's blah, like, blah. Yeah. I'm saying, do you think that this thing that you've been doing is going to become a problem if you keep doing it? Right. Which is like a fair question. Again, like I said, like... Why? Like, who cares? Do you need to bring that up? Maybe you shouldn't bring that up. Why don't you let her fail on her own? I did it in English, and Debbie told me, go ahead for Spanglish. I can speak English fluently, but... And Yara just goes, I can speak English fluently, and Delta's like... <laughs> Wong! <laughs> and the girl's like... Wong, wong, wong. Yeah, oh my god, wait. How have we not talked about Yara Sophia's confessional outfits? Oh my god. Where she literally looks like a drunk sailor. Darling, yeah, they're sitting around, and then all of a sudden, it's a very audible fart. Oh, yeah. Car and Carmen's like, oh, I farted. And they're all like, oh, my. I mean, it must have smelled very bad because they all, like, like cleared dispersed. out. And Delta, Delta, I can't even move. This is so fucked up. Carmen, I can't even move. That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> so, Raja and Delta are like, bye. We're going to yep. go in this other room and kiki. And they are just kikiing the house down. We'll talk about it because it is both offensive and hilarious. And then the, the, Raja's Raja just like, goes, I wonder if people talk about us this way. Just the editing just cut to silence. It's just like so good. This seemed like two best friends saying whatever they were thinking. I know it's the character of Jara to, to do that, but it's essentially the same thing from the video, the, mm. the, the last video we did. Mm. It's like it's like a soccer player from like Paraguay or something mixed with like Afghanistan and Charo. There was things that were uncomfortable and inappropriate. There were things that were really funny. You didn't laugh when they were talking about Afghani Charo? No, I didn't. It was uncomfortable? Yeah. But the, the phrase Afghani Charo? Well, I mean, yes. Made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deny it. It all starts with Delta asking Raja, like, why do you think Stacy didn't pick you for your team? For oh, her team. Right. Because you've been, like, killing it in all these challenges and you seem like the person to pick, basically. Sure. And Raja's like... I think that Stacy thinks I'm kind of a mean person, but it's not, that's not the, the case at all. She basically says, I see the fear in Stacy's eyes, and... I think if you're going to be in this competition, you've got to be able to hold your own, and I don't think she can. This is very great for me, where it's like, on one hand, I fully agree with Rasha, where it's like... You, if you came to this competition, you came to win. And I really like what she said versus some other people. Rasha's like, look, I said I would love to hang out with her, have some sweet tea and whatever. I like her as a person. Yeah. I just don't see her as competition. And she needs to bring... Like, we all came here to compete and you gotta bring it. And I get that. I'm here for that. The thing that we have that is common with other animals is that, is that people can smell, smell fear. I smell fear in her. But... On the other hand, there's just constantly been this immediate reaction of like, no, we're dismissing you and we're not gonna yeah. give you a shot to even show us. I smell fear in her and I tend to kind of not pick on her, but I'm just very like hard on her. And I think it colors Rue's perception. Totally. Because you can see that there's just a general air of like dismissiveness. And it's like, oh, Rue, I mean, are we, just... Stacy, we haven't seen your personality. And it's like, well, you did last week. She was. Fun eating fucking, you know, chicken legs and you thought it was hilarious, Rue. Yeah. And it crushes me to say bad things about someone that I don't know anything about. But I'm in a competition. Like, I'm so tired of looking at certain people and being like, oh, you're my competition? Delta keeps saying, I feel bad that I'm being so mean to her. Yeah. And it's that sort of, I guess it's that thing of like, this person who's so meek. Right. Right? And we're such 
strong person. And so that it's like an easy target. I think so. It comes off mean. When we talk about her, it comes off mean. And I'm not trying to be fucked up, and I know you're not trying to be fucked up. Stacey doesn't seem that unpolished to me relative to a lot of the other queens on the season, sure. at least so far. Now we're getting to the point, right, where it's like, okay, sure, maybe it's her time to go. Um, although I also don't find Shangela, Alexis, or Carmen to be particularly groundbreaking themselves either. No. So it's like, you know, at least Stacy is sweet and she's funny, Henny, and you know, whatever. Oh, Henny. Oh, Henny. So they're talking about Carmen. Yeah. And, and they're talking about how she talks very quietly and how she should really project and be like, hi, I'm Carmen, Carmen Carrera. Carrera, door click. Did I hear my name? And I want her to be like, hey, this is Carmen Carrera. And like, I just. Did I hear my name? <laughs> it never gets old. It literally never gets old. Oh, girl, we were just trying to. Uh, uh, we were talking shit. I mean, come on, I'm sorry, whatever. Why do you think we went in this other room? Fuck it. We were talking shit. That's what I wish they had said. So then all the top and bottom queens come back. And Shangela is like, I was personally offended by what you did. I felt offended. Offended, yeah. I felt offended. Really? Slightly. Yeah, and it just made me feel uncomfortable. And I was like, fuck you. Were you, Shangela? She said there are no other people of Asian descent who are on the news that would be good role models for her. Well, I guess she ain't seen Connie Chong. My name is Connie Chong. <laughs> she was just pissed you're gonna lose. Right. I was actually kind of thrown off guard because, I mean, I think it's open territory for me because I'm Asian. I mean, look at Margaret Cho. Literally, the point of drag is to push boundaries and be edgy. Yeah. So, for me, this whole discussion was moot. Right, it's like, well, let's not take anything too seriously. Right? I, mean, I was like, that was my problem with Shangela as a drag queen. Like, she's not edgy at all. Sure. Yeah. It's only offensive if someone non-Asian does it. How many times do you see a black person so act like all, like, Hood, hood and homeless, you know? To be fair, she's not Chinese, she's Filipino, and that's she's a She's Asian. Chandelier was being stupid. What's the line? I don't know. It's interesting. Why is it so bad if, you know, us as Asian or Manila decides to do something really funny and be stereotypical? It was just a bizarre conversation. Chris Rock only does, like, black jokes. You know what yeah. I mean? Chris so... Rock didn't only do black jokes, but I get it. Yeah. Well, I only do black jokes. I only do black jokes. I mean, that's what I love Delta. I don't know, everyone really decided to pile on Manila this episode, and I didn't know why. Yeah, it was like... Like, it was aggressive. And I guess maybe they were... Well, because Mariah hated her pineapple look. Mariah is just like... First, she's coming for her panda look, rightly so. She's like, right. so your scandal was that you had bad fashion? Bitch, that wasn't no scandal, that's just your style. A pineapple gown with glitter on it, bitch. Girl, I just can't take this. It's too much. Give me my pocketbook, I'm leaving. Give me my pocketbook, I'm out of here. Like, she just like walks out. She's I like, that's it. ridiculous. It was oh, so gosh. funny. It was so funny. But I didn't understand it. I didn't understand because I thought the pineapple look was fabulous. It was totally fabulous. I mean, I also thought Mariah looked fabulous. But like different looks, you know, like at least she's Paul, like you can't come for Manila's look as Manila's style, like that was great. Like she was polished, her makeup looked good, her hair, you're like, okay, cool. She had a, a complete ensemble, right? It's iconic. Yeah. Can I see your bag, Manila? Is this a real porcupine or whatever? Is it like a real porcupine or whatever? And Raj is like, pineapple? Pineapple? Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God she's pretty, honey, right? I mean, this is when I go, Raja is, is warranted to a certain extent in her condescending attitude. But Raja doesn't come for Carmen. No, she doesn't. See, that's, I think, what annoys me. Which is confusing. Exactly. She's it's she's like, okay, if you're an equal opportunity, like, if you're just going to come for every for bitch every, I mean, she and does take apart. She's like, pineapple? <laughs> It was like a, a minefield navigating this episode. Right? It was like racism, oh, oh god, right. oh no, oh mean-spirited, oh it's hilarious, oh racism, oh. It was like really a lot. <laughs> Pork times, like I don't know, it was just like a lot. She oh. was like middle America's interpretation of Asian people, but when they call them oriental. She was like a Chinese chicken salad. She was dollar <laughs> Chinese menu. <laughs> so we'll see you next Thursday. Uh, subscribe, share, Patreon, shirts, 
All of the above. Everything fabulous. Wink.com slash movie. Try wink.com slash movie bitches. And that's all, cunts. That was quite loud. Mm-hmm.